Today, I'm going to show you how to build a solar water heater. It is the same water heater as described in a book called Magic Machines in a Magic House. Just put the glass in yeah. last night and okay. I just closed the door on it so it should be accumulating heat so we're wondering if it's hot. So we want you to tell us what okay. temperature you think it. If you okay. think this is hot enough to pass muster. Oh yeah, that man, you could boil an egg in there. Well, it's just like uh Wow, look at the steam coming off it. Works as good as any heater, right? Man. <laughs> that, that's it's what it's hot water. Yeah, yeah. Coming off the tank that's just sitting up there just on the installed. Amazing. Yeah. The tanks that we are after for our batch water heater system are inside these, ele these electric water heaters. You can find electric water heaters almost anywhere. Plumbing stores have them left over. Metal recycling places have them. Your friends may have them in their backyard. To get to the tank, we've got to remove the outer sheet metal covering and all the fittings that are trapping that. You can see me removing the screws here so I can take the bottom off. The top is trapped by this valve, which is called an emergency relief valve. Once that's removed, you can remove the top also. This emergency relief valve is actually a really neat spring-loaded valve you could use for another project. When you've removed most of the easy things to remove and you're down to the sheet metal, you'll need to get a saw with a metal cutting blade and run the length of the tank or the sheet metal covering so that you can slip it off like you can see here in the picture. Once you pull the sheet metal off, you'll be looking at the foam covering of the tank. Some of them come off easy, some of them come off hard. This one came off relatively easy by just using a flat bar to pop it off. Right here, I'm putting some sort of lubricant like Vaseline or thread grease on a fitting or a plug that will fill the holes uh, where the valves came out and where the pipes were removed. Then you'll be ready to sand and clean the tanks for spray painting. When they're all spray painted with a flat black, perhaps heat resistant type paint, they'll be ready for the next step. There's three different approaches to building a solar water heater. One is to put the tanks inside of a freestanding box. This box you could place anywhere in your yard where it gets plenty of sun. I like to put them against the south side of a house where there's plenty of sunlight and the box is plumbed into the house from there. Right here we have one sitting on a roof. The box is cut at an angle because the roof wasn't facing south and we wanted the glass to face south. This box is 20 years old and was being repainted. The third option is to build the tank box directly into an attic space, which can be really nice. It protects it from weather that way. Right here are the cradles that will hold the tanks when we bring the tanks up and put them in place. Of course, you may need the tanks there to scribe them properly to get the shapes you want. Here's the box that we're beginning to build that will support all the inner workings of the water heater. Here's a little pad made out of a garden hose that will keep the metal protected and the wood protected where the tanks will rest on the wood carrier. Now we're ready for the next step. We're going to carry them up into the attic, lay them in their cradles, and get ready to strap them in. The tanks must be held very firmly, so I like to use strapping and screws to tighten as much as I can to hold them firmly in place. This is your drip pan to protect you against plumbing leaks. It should sit at an angle so that the water will go down to a drain at the far end. Regardless of which configuration you choose, if you have a box on the ground outside or tanks in an attic, the cold must go into the bottom of the first tank and then the warm water comes out of the top of that first tank and into the bottom of the second tank. The final hot comes out of the top of the second tank and goes to your shower or your sink or to the fixtures inside of your house. It's important to understand that the solar boxes must be as small as possible, just enough room to fit the tanks and the plumbing into without a lot of extra air inside that would make them less effective. Right here you can see me pre-assembling some of the plumbing so that I can slide them into the box because I wouldn't have room to be working inside of the box to put my plumbing together. The box must be so tight that that would be very difficult. So I'm going to pre-assemble my pieces and slide them into the box so that I can attach them later. Right here you can see the pipe. 
that I've slid into the box and then done the parts on the end where I could actually reach them. Here's the pipe coming out of the tanks and into the floor. So this is going directly to the shower. I like my plumbing to be close at hand. Now we're ready to insulate around the box to keep it warm inside. And after we've done the soft insulation, you can add layers of foam board to the outside. The more insulation you have, the warmer the box will stay. Now we're ready to start working on the top of the house. Here we're looking at the roof and you can see that we've already put asphalt around the edges where the glass is going to seal to it. Here you can see there's already a piece of flashing that's been put in place earlier too. This piece of flashing will take the water from the glass onto the roof. See the two pieces of strapping to both to the left and the right that's overlaying that flashing? That's going to be part of the retainment system for the glass. Here's the glass getting ready to go down in place. A nice bed of asphalt has gone all the way around and it will pr provide a perfect waterproof seal. We're dropping the glass onto that waterproof seal and we're getting ready to lift the strapping that comes out from underneath and will slide up over the top. See it in my hands there? And I'm going to cut it to length and screw a screw at the top that will then be covered by another piece of flashing to protect everything from weather. Right here you can see the final product as it looks almost invisible in the roof of a house. The solar water heater as well as many other devices are described in this wonderful new book called Magic Machines in a Magic House by Jack Seville. This is for people that are interested in lowering their utilities, getting off grid, or just want to do things differently and more interestingly. To enjoy the benefits of free energy, we need a free energy generator. Magic Machines describes a simple energy generator that is the core idea behind all the comfort providing appliances in a magic house. So now let's take a look at the different devices in a magic house. Here we have a solar space heater that provides heat for your home. We also have a fresh air exchanger to bring fresh air into the house. A fan that actually can drive air conditioning and heating systems. Passive refrigeration is available. Sometimes we need to put the solar space heater in the roof. This is a solar space heater with a fresh air exchanger and a backup system that's easy to understand. Here we have an air conditioning system that's really interesting. And the Magic House itself, which has all the different combinations of ideas. It may include a solar oven or a gravity powered rainwater system. For the more technically inclined, we have a thermal pile generator, which is an easy to build in your garage idea based on a thermal couple. All of these ideas and many more that we haven't had time to show you are available in the book called Magic Machines in a Magic House by Jack Seville. You can order it on Amazon.com.